Here's a flash revision guide on cell structure, including the difference between eukaryotes and prokaryotes, scales and magnitudes, and the differences between plant, animal, and bacteria cells. Let's get into it. First, let's look at prokaryotes and eukaryotes. All living organisms are made out of building blocks known as cells. Some organisms, like bacteria, are unicellular. This means every individual cell is an independent organism. Others are multicellular, which basically means the organism is made out of millions of cells working together. Examples of these are plants and animals. Every single organism can be classified into two groups, eukaryotes or prokaryotes. Eukaryotes are organisms such as animals, plants and fungi, whereas prokaryotes can be unicellular organisms such as bacteria. The main difference between the two is how their genetic material is stored. Eukaryotes have cells which have all their genetic material stored in a structure known as a nucleus, whereas prokaryotic cells don't have a nucleus. Instead, their genetic material floats around in the cells. Eukaryotic cells are also more complex than prokaryotic cells and are much larger in size. So let's get a better appreciation of these sizes and scales. Prokaryotic cells have a tiny size of around 1 micrometer, whereas eukaryotic cells have a much larger size of around 10 to 100 micrometers. To get an idea of these sizes, a micrometer, which we use a mu symbol for, is a thousand times smaller than a millimeter. This means a thousand micrometers are equal to one millimeter and 1,000 millimeters are equal to one meter. So this means that prokaryotes are a million times smaller than a meter ruler. That's because a thousand times a thousand is a million. To convert from micrometers to millimeters, you can divide by a thousand. And to go the other way around, you can just multiply by a thousand. This is the same for millimeters to meters. You can divide by a thousand to get to meters, and to get from meters back to millimeters, you can multiply by a thousand. So let's try using this in an example. Let's say we had a eukaryotic cell with a size of 67 micrometers. You can divide it by 1000 to give you 0.067 millimeters. And if you divide by 1000 again, that will give you an answer of 6.7 times 10 to the minus 5 meters. Now you can also use orders of magnitude to make rough comparisons of sizes or quantities between two different things. For example, if we had a bacteria cell that was 1 micrometer and a plant cell that was 10 micrometers, we would say the plant cell is 10 times bigger than the bacteria cell. Another way to say this is the plant cell is one order of magnitude bigger than the bacteria cell. This is because for every 10 times an object is larger than another, the order of magnitude increases by one. So if the plant cell was 100 micrometers, we would say it's 100 times greater, or two orders of magnitude larger because it increases by 10 two times. 1000 times would be 3 orders of magnitude, 10,000 would be 4, and so on. So earlier when we said that prokaryotic cells were a million times smaller than a meter ruler, another way to say this is that it's 6 orders of magnitude smaller. That's because dividing by a million is the same as dividing by 10 6 times. Now, let's dive into the structures of animal, plant and bacteria cells. Animal cells have a cell membrane which holds everything together. These control what goes in and out of the cell. They're filled with a jelly-like substance known as cytoplasm, where most chemical reactions in the cell occur. Floating in the cytoplasm are what we call the subcellular structures. This includes the nucleus, which controls the cell's activities and contains all the genetic material of the cell. They also have mitochondria, which are known as the powerhouse of the cell. This is because this is where energy is released for the cell to carry out its activities. This energy is released from the process of aerobic respiration. And finally, animal cells also have ribosomes floating in the cytoplasm. This is where proteins are made in a process known as protein synthesis. Plant cells have a more rectangular shape and contain everything an animal cell has, including cell membranes, cytoplasm, nuclei, mitochondria, and ribosomes. But they also have three extra structures that animal cells do not. They have a rigid cell wall made up of a substance known as cellulose. This strengthens the cell and allows it to keep its shape. They also have a permanent vacuole which contains cell sap. Cell sap is just a solution of sugar and salt which also helps to support the shape of the cell. And lastly, plant cells are filled with structures known as chloroplast, which is where photosynthesis happens. They're made up of a green pigment known as chlorophyll, which absorbs sunlight for photosynthesis and is what makes all the plants green. Now bacteria cells also have some of these structures. 
They contain cell membranes, cytoplasm, ribosomes and cell walls, but they do not have a nucleus. Instead, most of their genetic material is found in a single circular loop that floats around in the cytoplasm. The rest is found in small rings of DNA known as plasmids, which also float around in the cytoplasm. They do not have nuclei, chloroplasts, permanent vacuoles or mitochondria. And that's it for that topic guys. If you enjoyed the video and found it useful, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.